everyone, welcome to my channel and today I'm going to be talking to you about the project stages in a technology consulting project and actually peep this. This is so cute. I just got it and it's actually going to be here only for a few more months because we're going to be moving to a new place. So if you guys have not watched it yet, make sure to check out the real estate vlog. We are actually buying a condo, so just make sure to check that out. The first thing is that when it comes to a project stage, there's many different stages and actually this is where your day-to-day -day job can actually differ. So I want to go more into like what exactly what stage is, what kind of work to expect, and maybe what kind of day-to-day -day job you can kind of expect in that time it's no surprise that in consulting your job is really cyclical it really depends on the kind of project stage on how much work you have what kind of work maybe even how much travel when it comes to technology consulting it's not like that you're traveling 24 7 some parts are going to be requiring more travel than others and i'm going to go really into every single bit of it so the first thing is in the very beginning before a project even starts they have a sales team and typically it could be two different types of people one could be more delivery based so they actually know how to do the project if they had to like the implementation and then the other could be sales people who really do the research they do a lot of SOW and contract writing so that's what they do when it comes to sales and a lot of times in the sales it's actually when it comes to sales it's really mostly pitching to the client on like we are the best implementation partners compared to other clients they it's not really more of like oh we'll do this work for you therefore we will do it for you it's really more of like they have an objective in mind and they're trying to find people to do it. So that's what happens when it comes to a sales pitch, RFP, which is basically a request for proposal. A consulting sales team would go out there, make a pitch based off of the RFP, and then... Aww. Aww. Donna's at the door. Hey, Don. Look at her. She's so cute. She was at the door just crying. Aww. Okay, girl. All right, back to this. So when you go through the sales, this is actually also when they come into like what kind of resources we need, what is in scope. And this is mostly, for example, like who should be leading the project, who should be doing this work stream or that work stream and how many hours to allocate. So this is at the very beginning stages, kind of setting up the entire stage. This is not to say that it will change over time. There's constantly change orders to make sure that you have the correct hours and maybe that you wanted to change scope and you wanted to add this like whole new module that wasn't in scope before that will require more hours, more money. In design stage, which is after the entire SOW is done, you have all the resources staffed. Make sure to check out my staffing video over here on exactly how that gets started so that way you can get on a project or maybe you just want to see how the entire project life cycle will go. So the first thing is design. This is probably my most favorite part of the entire project because it's actually the most design thinking or consulting like part of the entire project so this is where you learn about your clients requirements in this case like let's say for example we go in for work day we want to learn more about like how do you do business and it's less about like how can the technology work for you it's really more of learning their entire process and using the technology to kind of piece the little puzzle pieces together so honestly this is really fun because you always need to remember that even though what they're saying current state well there you're here as a consultant you're not necessarily just here for current state you're here to help them out with the future state so in this case like there's gonna be a lot of work here because even though you're technology consultants you're kind of also like a management consultant and this is specifically for roles like functional consulting or business analysts there's always gonna be roles out there where you're not even really involved in this you're really just collecting technical requirements so when it comes to design stages this is where you're really trying to gather all the things that they're trying to do maybe do some process optimization which is honestly one of my favorite parts because they kind of ask you like what are your best practices what do you recommend how what is the best way to kind of make this efficient as possible this is where it gets your gears going and this is honestly where you really trying to solve all the problems and honestly this is also the part where you can make the most tangible effort to really make a change because you are really helping them as an entire organization even though you're working on a technology you're changing the way they're doing business as well so with these design sessions you have discovery sessions which is really more of like discovering what they do and some people they follow like a kind of like a excel workbook some of them follow slides some of them just have like a whiteboard and just like everything says goes and then you just kind of go in there and there's so many things you can do here this is where a lot of consulting firms can go really creative or they can go stick to the book and by the way when it comes to design sessions you're also going to be on site a lot more that's also where you have a lot more efficient communication with them like for example whiteboard it's gonna be so hard to do 
do that remotely. And also, usually technically in the earlier stages of the project, like let's say sales or SOW, you want to build a relationship with them. It's a lot harder to do it over the camera or video call or audio call. So they always want to go in person and build that relationship. And there's a lot of ways that like you can do it over the internet, but it's not that ideal than if you were to do it in person. Then you have build, and this is the part where it gets a lot more technical. The build is really more of like, let's say for a functional consultant, you're trying to configure this software to really fit to what they were talking about in the design sessions. And then the technical consultants could be more building an integration or building a system or programming something based off of the requirements. So in some cases, you may have management consultants doing the design, and then they kind of hand it off to technical consultants to do the build. But for me particularly, I do both. It's just a matter of a different part of the software. So for me, it's how do we build a process flow of this, for example, how to pay out a support invoice and go all the way to the payment. So I kind of have a sense of what it goes into the process and then trying to make that happen in the software. There are a lot of logical flows and a lot of business process steps. So a lot of kind of condition rules and if statements. So if you kind of know about how that works in programming, it's very similar, but in a more user-friendly way. This also kind of helps out with like, let's say custom validations. Like maybe you want to prevent someone from filling out this field, or if for example, you fill out this field, you want to require this field now. That is also something that we do too. So it's really kind of building the user experience and really helping it flow as much as possible. There's always gonna be a time where there's a gap where the software can't support what they're doing. So we kind of help them out with also workarounds. If there is no workaround, then this is where like software is not always perfect. Then when it comes to build, you're actually building the prototype. And this is where you're just building out something that does not even have, it's definitely not the final build at all. Building, there's not a lot of travel because you're just literally building the tenant or building the system. You don't need the client to be there. Maybe some here or there, like some questions that could be over an email or a quick call. And then you go through testing, which is where the clients are actually coming up with test scenarios. Typically, these so test scenarios are like test scripts where they are doing real things that they're doing right now or in the future state. So when it comes to test scenarios, there could be two different ways that they're created. One could be through the consulting company or one could be through the client themselves. I prefer it so that the client does it because that's actually how they do business. How, what do we know about their business? So like, for example, for us, we have smoke testing and unit testing just to make sure everything works and that it's supposed to run the way it's supposed to run, the way that we built it. And then the client has end-to-end -end testing, which is really like they have a whole script in today's business or like how they want to do it in the future tense. And then they kind of go through it to see if there are any bumps in the road that they want to fix or tweak. And this is where we go in and go back and forth. Like they send over a testing scenario, they pass it or they fail it. If they fail it, it goes to retest and then it goes to us. And then here we go fix it in or maybe have like a whole process design call as well because sometimes like maybe there is a gap that they didn't notice before because you really can't go over everything like there's always going to be small little tweaks here and there that may just like oh you didn't realize that that can't be done you just have to find a workaround so there are times like that where we have a whole call trying to work it through and then after that we send it back they have to retest it make sure it works if it works it passes and move on um, testing is actually where you're going to be on site probably the most. You're more like a TA and a class, so that way you're really making sure that they know how to do it. Testing is also a really great way for them to kind of learn about the system because in the previous times, like design session, this is really just kind of us learning about their business processes. When it comes to testing, this is also where you would go maybe for like, for example, um, I'm working on the supplier part of the entire system and it's just like one week. I will go there for that one week. And then maybe if someone else is working on expense reports, they will be going for that week. And then maybe someone else is working on accounting, they will go for that week. Uh, it's like sometimes depending on the budget, you may or may not be there with your entire team. Sometimes they may want the entire team just to show unity and also to make sure everyone is in the loop for everything and just in case that there's some kind of dependency in like particular modules. But sometimes if there's like low budget, you may just be there for the sessions you're there for. There were times when I was literally there only for two days of the entire month just because my section was smaller than everyone else's or that I was there for like maybe two weeks while someone was only there for one day or what even not at all. So when it comes to testing, this is also where they're really trying to learn and you're trying to push it off as much as possible. Sometimes there's some consulting firms that may want to kind of do it hand in hand so that way you can use it as more like building a relationship for future after work because 
you really want them to own it but at the same time you may want to guarantee some work in the future it really depends on your approach but a lot of times the goal is to really get them comfortable with it there's also user readiness tests where it's really just to make sure that the client is ready to use the system without you um, but for example things like workday everything will update when there's an update rather than having a consulting team to go in to manually make the updates because a lot of it is going to be hard coded so during the testing phase you also have cutover or when it comes to like making sure everything runs smoothly this is really when you're about to go live you want to make sure everything is in is in good hands so you have like a little checklist with deadlines and this is where it gets messy because you have to make sure that it cuts over properly from the consultant to the client and you also want to make sure that like everything is in line because a lot of times are chronological order so if, if one thing is late then everything else is late so this is where cutover planning and especially planning early is very key so let's say for example we have a lot of supplier invoices we want to import into the system so that way when they go live they can use them or to actually make transactions and work off of them if we don't have that in time they could actually be late on their payments and that could affect their business so we really need to be on top of that then let's say for example supplier invoices well you can have invoices without suppliers so the suppliers need to be in the system before then and you really want to make sure that that's taken account in this cutover plan so when it comes to deployment this is when you're about to go live there's a lot of things that you need to do with data conversion so you're taking client data you're trying to transform it and put it into the system so there's a lot of things with that and not to mention you're trying to get ready for go live go live is basically when the entire system or maybe parts of the system comes live to the public and there's sometimes people that do like a soft launch or hard launch soft launch could be like it's out there but it's not readily available to everyone or hard launch could be for everyone deployment is typically like during the key weeks hopefully you're there on site it's a lot harder to do this when you're not on site because then like if there's like an issue that comes out then you kind of have to jump on there last minute but if you're on there in person you can literally just do it right then and there there are times when for example they're trying to make a payment and they're trying to print out checks but then the checks are like printed like maybe like double-sided but they're really supposed to be single-sided then you're like okay well how do i do that so i have to go in there and try to help them out so this is where you're kind of needed because it's almost like you're trying to help them out as much as possible because you never know what's going to come out when it comes to go live there could be even things like let's say you're trying to do more like payroll or paychecks if for example there's an issue with the payment integration or maybe something with payroll or something about taxes something like that people are not going to get their paychecks and that's a huge deal so there's always a lot of trying to test to make sure everything works but there's always times when it doesn't work and in deployment or in hypercare hypercare is basically the work right after go live is where we're trying to basically be on call to make sure everything is okay however this is also the part where we're most hands off because this is they have to own the system now it's their system but we're still there to really help them along the way and this is also when we're we're not working with them that much but at least maybe for like the week before the week of and the week after we might be on site with them just to kind of hold their hands and get everything ready and it's just a lot more efficient to kind of do this in person but in the past it's really just not going to be that much because after that they have to own it on their own so there's also knowledge transfer sessions as well so hopefully this is done either during the testing session or during the deployment session because this is during the time where they're trying to learn how to do everything that you have been doing because after that they have to make their own changes themselves for some software out there this is really mostly for like administrative work it's not necessarily for the typical end user so let's say for example an administrator that needs to create a username or a password for a new user you typically would not know that until you go through training or that someone has had knowledge transfer session with you other thing could be security do you have the right access who needs the right access to do this particular thing you need knowledge transfer sessions to make sure that they know about that so that way when we are completely off the project when we roll off in like maybe one or two months they know exactly what to do and of course some clients do go for aftercare work which is more like support work if you have support work we're just kind of like we're kind of like on call or if you have questions we will help you so that's like also something that a lot of a, a lot of bigger clients consider if they have a lot of work to do so that's how it is when it comes to project stages there's a lot going on and again this is mostly specific to functional technical is really mostly like gathering requirements it could be something like oh do you go xslt or do you want to go xml like what kind of things like those are the more technical for functional it's really more about learning about their business and how to translate it and how to transform it there's a lot of different ways maybe if you want to go into data analytics like what kind of data do you have who's going to be doing what how what is the outcome you want and how do we want to analyze it all those kind of things there's so many different ways to do it then like for example you would be prepping the data you'd be working with the data crunching numbers making a lot of calculations then you present it on a slide and say like, these are the insights 
so we have this is a recommendation and then that's how it would be then when it comes to those kind of projects but this is specifically for a lot of software implementations and specifically a lot of functional so a lot of them do follow this because it's the standard software development lifecycle kind of process when it comes to waterfall but honestly there's a lot that you can do and this is just one of them so thank you for watching my video. Hopefully you like it. If you like this kind of content, please leave me a like. That would tell me that I'm doing a good job and that you want more of this content. And definitely make sure to subscribe so you can learn more from me. Thank you so much and see you guys next time. Bye.